Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to take a little look at the Sassing Knot, a model by Len Lecocca, which is uh, a part of the Lendo Isle series. First one is the, uh, the Secret of Bone Hill, and the last one after that there was Deep Dwarven Dell, if I remember it correctly. Uh, it's not a very good one, the third one, so you kind of forget it. Play this, this, uh, this one and the first one. And don't worry too much about the uh, the third one. It was a rush job. I will cover that uh, later on in a different uh, video. Uh, needless to say, uh, Lukaku went on to uh, Dragon's Foot, I think, <clears throat> with a bunch of guys wrote uh, uh, a sort of pamphlet and some adventures on land or island itself uh, with the help of the uh, people from Dragon's Foot. So yeah, be sure to pop over there, uh, download it, and uh, have a little enjoyable read. Supposed to be quite good. I have yet to download it and look at it myself, to be quite honest with you, but uh, I will get around to it one day. Anyway, this model, uh, it's uh, a murder mystery. Basically, you go to a town called Garotin to discover who amongst the dastardly citizens there murdered the Baron of Restonford. And uh, it's a brilliant, brilliant model, because if you play it properly, you can put a lot of suspense, a lot of character interactions, and a lot of uh, humour as well. And not only that, you can sort of uh, uh, work the scenario around what the players do. It's very free form. It's not uh, uh, a railroad or anything like that. The characters are free to explore, talk to whoever they like, take the time, whatever. Um, there is a time limit. That's the only uh, railroad they've got uh, because they've got to solve the mystery of the assassin before he strikes again. And when they do solve it, then uh, there's a few rewards for the playing characters in as much as they got um, wealth and fame for being the Columbos of the uh, magical realms. But not only that, the players themselves will get a huge amount of this model. It's not a high level model, it's two to five, but it's packed with so much in there that um, you'll be, oh, I don't know how many uh, months of uh, play you get out of this, but you will get a lot. Now it's a two gatefold map uh, thing, on the physical side of it, you've got uh, the um, inner side of Steve, on the upper Steve, which is this, the uh, locale of Lake Farming, which I um, put in the Forgotten Worms, not that far from uh, Waterdeep, um, I marked a part of the map and looked, mm, you know, you could do with uh, having Lake Farm in there, oh, that's what I did, uh, because um, it's sort of a sort sandbox area that I've decided to put uh, the models and everything on. Sort of kind of don't have to travel so far over the map. Uh, I'm going to count this left, right, and centre. Uh, we put it in a small uh, locale. It's a lot better and easier to get to. Makes more sense as well. Anyhow, uh, the other gate on Steve has got uh, the map of the uh, the castle. Now the um, the sequence of play is where they uh, get information from the. Um, the people in uh, Rashford and uh, who they suspect may have done the deed uh, and as much as they've got several clues and these clues point to several people in um, in Garotin and uh, the characters have to interview these people talk to them find out if they really did do the deed but uh, it's red herrings the evidence has been planted at the murder scene uh, designed to point the finger at someone else so you have to look and find uh, who that person is, or at least the playing characters will have to find who that person is. And while they do doing all that, they've got to travel around, or they have to, it means up to them. They travel around the, um, the very detailed, well laid out village and start talking to people there. And as you can see from the pages I'm going through here, there's a lot of different details about, uh, sorry, a lot of details about the, uh, the, the environment that they find themselves in and the people whom they talk to. Uh, for example, there's a guy here uh, who's uh, a blacksmith, half ogre, and will fight at the drop of a hat. You know, simply say the wrong word to him and he, boom, he's gone and he's having to go with you. So the playing card just have to fight him and so on. So they also got a uh, priest who is one of the suspects who's suffering from uh, serial dementia. And uh, he's got a fantastic way of costing, uh, paying for spells. He has a wheel, uh, several wheels, as a matter of fact, and he will taste them, and then whatever number they come at, that's the uh, the price he charges for the spell. It could be anywhere between nothing, 
to uh, 10,000 gold pieces, depending on what kind of mood he's in and what the wheel says. Of course, he has an assistant in hubs uh, to make sure he doesn't go a bit overboard. We can like just fire up all you or let him like this to you as soon as look at you. We've got a pub, and the pub is very well detailed. Uh, it's got a lot of things going on in the background, uh, the undercurrents in the pub. Uh, the playing carders will pick up on that. And there's a map, uh, sorry, there's details of the pub itself and the rooms they find themselves in. Then you've got the church, and uh, the priest is uh, there, as I said, who's very likely to uh, fireball you. Yeah, yeah, they, they sort of rolls over one page in the next illustration of him fireballing the uh, person. Um, you also got a theatre, and um, yeah, all these locales are in here are the uh, suspected locales, so when they go and interview them, they get involved in the environment around and of the people in each one of the locales. And there's enough detail in there of the characters themselves to give a kind of um, soap opera. Uh, they're all the backstory they've got. I mean, it's short on um, detail, but there's so much in that detail anyway that you can uh, wring an entire night's work out of it uh, just by having them interact with the characters, seeing their motives, uh, how they say things, what they say things, and so on and so forth. Then you've got the castle. The castle itself is the main area of the uh, of the model and uh, it's very, very detailed. You've got a rota uh, rotation uh, of the people in the castle, where they would be, the percentage of chance they would be uh, in that particular locale, the list of the guards, then you've got the castle location, the percentage and all that business. And um, as other people have pointed out, it's the um, only model and actually gives you a rotation uh, who uses the privy or the toilet at any one time. So you can probably be walking in and finding the uh, leader of the castle taking a dump, uh, which leads to some hilarious role playing for those who kind of like that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and the rest of the uh, model is detailed in the castle, as I said, and uh, the underground part of the castle, or the cellars. Um, and there's a few little bits and pieces here and there at the end about the magic, the new magic. And of course, there's a map you've got here of the uh, place, the environment, uh, the road, um, sort of uh, town people, the little cars and town people who they're in, and the stats they got for them, and so on and so forth. And then there's the town of Garot in itself with the numbered sequences. So the details are actually in the, in the main body of the uh, model. So you, they kind of say, I want to go down the street here. Yeah. You look up the number and um, you describe the actual thing to them. Now, when I took this model and played it with the characters many years ago, they had an absolute blast. They thunderously enjoyed this model and I really enjoyed running it as well. Because there was a lot of free form going on here, and they were not restricted in A, they had to get to A, to B, to C, and there was no other way they can do it. Here it's free form, they can go to A, to C, back to A, over to B, and even if they want to do it, they can go to G. You know, it's that kind of a model, and you just leave this as a framework and don't run off the uh, adventure. Um, it, uh, and you don't have to do all that much work in, on, on it either because a huge amount of it is done but for you by the uh, the writer of the model itself. I think it's absolutely brilliant and um, I would recommend anybody getting this. Whatever chance you get, if you see it, take it, you know, get the model and sit down and read it all the way through six or seven times to familiarise yourself with it so that uh, you know when the players actually start playing and you know what players are like. They go from different angles and look at things in different ways and go shooting off to places they shouldn't be going to and stuff like that. This model allows you to, that kind, uh, to give that kind of play. It allows you to accommodate for it, you know. And if you're a good dungeon master, you'll run with this. And it was uh, printed in 1983, which is why I was looking back at this particular page. It's when it was a hell of a long time ago, too. Anyway, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this model. And uh, as I said, the playing characters or the players themselves, had a wonderful time as well. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I uh, hope you have a good day, you know. So, rock on.